Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jinx and I'm from IGS Electronics. So today we're going to continue on a previous video, the one we did last time, which was the part one, uh, where we were checking out uh, the communications between uh, uh, Schneider and Magellis uh, HMI with uh, Schneider's M221 uh, PLC. So uh, yes, this is a continuation of the video, so uh, we're going to jump in to uh, check out some other ways of creating the buttons and hopefully we'll have enough time as well to dive into a bit of our analog processing as well. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, this is where we are left in last video. If you want to see that, uh, this is where this is our little screen in here. By the way, I just literally started up the the, the system and uh, they quickly tested the button again. For whatever the reason, I had an IO scanner error, so I'm not sure where that came from. So uh, often, often uh, to clear that is just to restart the system. I must have, must have did something that uh, was requiring the restart. So if you ever get an IO scanner error popping up in this window in here and I'll put in the errors. Uh, the best best thing is always uh, to restart the system and uh, see if it's still there. So my one disappeared straight away. So so today we're going to be a, uh, working on uh, these, putting these two buttons and hopefully you might, you might have enough time to put some a, uh, uh, analogs on the screen as well, these guys in here. So uh, let's just leave this because I was just checking, making sure everything is working. So uh, we're going to be working with the same type of buttons, but a little bit different. So let's grab a uh, text first and uh, and type in here, uh, run, let's go under it. And that's going to be forward run, which is FWD, FWD, uh, hopefully that looks all right. Again, not the greatest designer. All right, let's just change the the font size as well to smaller uh, oh, I just did something what I'm supposed to do so let's just get rid of that one so now we can click on that one and double click on that one and change the font uh, here we go I keep forgetting what I one thing I constantly keep forgetting is clicking that thing in there so otherwise it just keeps opening and it's, it's, it's thinking that I'm after another uh, I'm making another text so uh, so yeah the button I'm gonna do the same in here uh, that does not look sexy at all but it'll do for now so and let's go for this one this time what we're gonna do we're gonna say switch with a lamp so uh, basically once you do the switch with the lamp you can see when you click on or off, it will change states like red and green, red and green, if you wish to do that. So, uh, and for, the, for that, for the lamp to come on, it needs to, it needs to know when do, I, when do I change this color. So then you have to give them a tag when the bit is on. So we want this bit in here, which is our gonna be uh, for run. When bit is on, change the color. So that's what exactly what we're gonna do. And then obviously the operation, we are just gonna be still while when touched. And we're gonna say toggle. So well for that, and then we're gonna do the give him a tag as well. So forward, add, and then okay. So that button is pretty much ready. So uh, now we should we should technically, technically uh, change colors when we load it in. The next button, the next button is gonna be a bit more interesting. So uh, it took me a while to figure out. So going through quite a bit uh, Schneider tutorials to try and figure out how this is done. Cause I wanted to see this guy when it's placed, it stays in and it changes the color. And when I, when I can press it again, it will come out. So to do that, so we need to go into there. First, let's do the text. Let's do the text right here. So, and then it's going to be run R E R E, run reverse. It'll do. Actually, that doesn't look bad at all, that size. I might actually leave the other one as well, though, like that. So, let's do that. Let's change that one to font that as well. Why are you like that and you are like that? Am I missing something? Why 
Why are you like that? I don't know. There's gotta be... I literally don't know. It looks like the same. What if I move? Can I move on down? Oh, there you go. Hmm. There you go. Anyway, I must... Did I do that like that? No. I don't know. Anyway, let's stop trying it. So the first thing you need to do is create a, uh, what's called the radio button. The button that stays in when you click it. So it's like a set. So here we go. So by doing that, so we're going to say a radio with lamp because we want to change that, uh, change the state as well. Change, change the color. Let's put that one on it. And the lamp will come on, obviously, when we are going to uh, reverse run it. Okay. And a radio variable as well is going to be our reverse run. So now, technically, when you do we do everything? Yes, do we do everything? Yes. When we're going to click this, this is going to stay in, and the light will change well, but stays in. So we need to somehow to reset it. So for that, we need to create like an invisible button. So for that, we're going to go into switch and literally go over it. Click on it, and then we're gonna go into invisible button, which is gonna be our bit. And this one is gonna be actually a reset. So we wanna reset that button. So, uh, and we're gonna say, which one is that gonna be? That's gonna be our reverse running in here. So, and then add, and a click okay so now when we when we click it once uh oh we forgot one very important thing so because we, we, at the moment is invisible and we need to tell him when to be visible so when you go into visibility this is says enable visibility when that bit is live so basically i'm going to override that button in here that that's going to become under it and this this invisible button is going to come over it so we'll be able to reset it so uh it's like a two in one i don't know sure not sure why they didn't like that but hey it is what it is so now let's go into our target so and pump this in and have a look how that works so we are on usb that's all being done in there let's just go straight in so uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna pump it in so uh this should change in a minute, so we're going to quickly check it out in a minute. So let me pause in here, we'll, we'll be back once it's done. Oh no, he's got, he's got issues. I uh, cannot define that the defined target machine. Target machine. Oh, my USB is not plugged in. So, uh, yeah, I need to plug the USB. Because I was using it, I was using to quickly monitor my uh, PLC. See what's, what's happening. So, uh, I need to... Uh, unplug it so now we should be okay so here we go so you see that so let's pause in here we'll catch up when it's done here we go that is done let's have a look what we have created in here so uh, let's put a bit, bit more in the camera so we can see it better so now when I uh, uh, so this is my enable signal in there so I enable my drive so my drive goes into run as you can see down here and now I have already preset some uh, small frequency there it sends a third of a frequency or something like that by clicking run forward as you can see my drive now runs forward and the button is showing, as you can see in here, like a red. But it's not staying in. So if you want the button to stay in, it's, this is the ne next method which I just did in here. So by clicking on it, as you can see, the button has actually stayed in. So now that, now, now that I did that, uh, the invisible button has been uh, popped up now. So now I, when I try to click it again, it will reset it. So, so this is pretty much what we are trying to do in here, reset that bit. So by clicking again, as you can see the button comes out so uh it's pretty cool i like it so uh this is just to give an ideas of ways you can uh have your buttons to be in, uh, to be uh working uh, light is going everywhere so next up let's uh let's add a bit of a frequency so you can see so you can change the frequency as well and to do that let's jump back on our camera in here so uh, let's go into back on our project that we are building. So uh, we are going to grab a, as you see in here, numeric display. Numeric display, string display, date display, time display. We need a numeric display. Let's 
jump on that. So uh, let's create one, I don't know, uh, here maybe. Again, we are not trying to make things pretty in here, guys. We are just trying to uh, sort of uh, have a look what we're going to do and how, uh, just to show you how, it's, how, how, to, how, it's be, how to do it. So in here, what we're going to do, this is a choice you can make, how you want your window to be. I like 28. Let's do that one. So the first one, we want to a uh, input mode. If you go in input mode, enable input mode. So input mode is really crucial if you want to edit it. So uh, if, it, if it's not available, if it's not ticked, so it's only just for visibility only. So for the, we're going to want to input for that one. And then we're going to do give him a variable. Again, this is just a very basic way of doing it. So uh, and we're going to go variable, uh, actual frequency, not dry frequency. So let's click OK. So and that's pretty much would be ready to go. Obviously, there's all sorts of fancy other things you can do and blah, 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 and uh, alignment. And there's a lot to do for now. That will do. So now we click in OK in the window. It looks like that. Let's just. I'm not sure I like it. Will do. It will literally do. And let's put a text, uh, uh, the text in here. So and we're going to type in. Uh, frequency. Edit. So we know what we're what we're doing in there. Let's put that as a capital. Why not? Again, yeah, that'll do. Again, remember, guys, I'm not a programmer. I know enough, and that'll do me to get me by. I let the, let the boys with those on their every day and daily basis. They're much more better on this than definitely me. So the next one, we want to see the frequency. So it, what the actual frequency is, which drive is able to do, is send it back. So for that, let's change that one as well to our 28 and give him the, which we already created this tag in here, which is, uh, which is, you can see in here, actual frequency. So that's something that drives given us back. And we were, we, where do we get these? Where, where, do, where do we get these variables? We, we already done this in the previous videos, guys. So, uh, and that's gonna do. So this one is just gonna be reading. We're not gonna be able to edit it. So, uh, and let's give him a text as well. Oh, and we're going to call it act to all. Frequency. Actual frequency will do. Just to give us an idea of what we're looking at. So there we go. That will do for these, for these type of windows in there. So, uh, and just quickly, Give you an idea as well where we get this data from. As you can see in here, we talked about in the, these previous videos. If you go into the uh, where was the network object? I think it was network object. So and then we go in our IO input uh, regu in input registers. And so see, as you can see down there, this this input address in here sending me the actual frequency, sending it back from the drive into the controller. And controller can see what is really going on. And all I'm doing in here, I'm taking that in, uh, that, uh, that that data and transferring it into memory word too. Remember, guys, for you to for the for the, the for the HMI to work and being able to interact with your uh, bits, you, they have to be internal bits. So so you can't uh, interact with physical bits. Well, I think well, actually, don't call me on that because Schneider is pushing boundaries, which 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 sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But usually, try to use the internal bits or memory words. For for the for the for for the data that you are going to use inside your HMIs. So pretty much there you go. So and then obviously the, again, guys, watch the previous videos. We already done this before. So uh, that should do. So what we're going to do in here. So let's pump that across, and I shall see you on our HMI. Alrighty, that's done. So let's let's jump across. So there we go. So as you can see now, that is on our HMI screen right in here. As you can see, it already says frequency edit, and it says, well, that's the last frequency. That this is basically is reading that's already been set inside the drive, and it says it's 500. So remember, as I said before, the frequency uh, the, the the frequency word works from uh, one uh, to from zero to 1,500. So 1,500 is going to be your uh, full frequency, whichever you have in your drive. So by clicking a run forward, as you can see, the actual frequency is being fed back from the drive via the mod bus. And then you can actually read out we uh, through that memory word, which I just showed you a second ago. 
And if you want to edit it, as you can see this one, if you click it, you can't do anything because we click that as a non-editable. So, and then this one, as you can see now, it opens up this window. So now we can go at 1000 and it will update that inside the, the, the PLC. And PLC is going to transfer that telling the drive, hey, run it 1000 now, or in our case, that's going to be a, uh, uh, in a drive that is 33.3 hertz. So in a full speed, it's going to be 1,500, and this is very, this is this is like a basic, basic way of a controller net without doing any scaling. We're going to be looking at all those things possibly in the future. I'm not sure uh, how far we're going to push this. So we we still got analogs to check out. We still got temperatures to check out. There's a lot, 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 lot of hardware that comes part of this family. We're going to be pushing that in a forwards video because at the moment it's quite hard. So let's just do it's going to be quite hard to get Schneider Electric products because they are because of the chip shortage all around the world and other problems they have down there. So I'm trying to get as much as products in for you to have a look how they work. So and also the same thing as well works for our reverse and it's gonna show that I'm going backwards. And that's it, that's it. That's pretty much, this is how simple it can be done. So quickly, I'm gonna choose this, because a couple of you are probably gonna be uh, requesting as well, saying, train, uh, well, mate, I don't understand this. Where did you get this memory words from? It's just to re re do a little uh, reminder, we are using, as you can see, input register, input register, um, as you see, it's, uh, it's uh, 0 uh, 200.0.1, it's our frequency, we are sending data from memory word 0, which this is the one we are using in here, this guy in here is our memory word 0, the one we are editing, this variable, yeah, so, uh, and that one, that memory word zero in here, sending this, uh, yeah, sending this data into a uh, output word, which outputs that to the drive. So, uh, and then, uh, then drive sends, says, well, hello, I'm, I've got this, this, there. then they're going to inputs, yeah, then it says the information has been sent back. Then it says, oh, okay, I can, I'm reading something's happening. This is the frequency, it says I'm doing it now. And it's sending that frequency into memory word two. And that memory word 2 gets displayed in here. So it says variable, what am I reading is because the variable is actually displaying what's in that word. That's exactly what we are getting for the actual speed. That, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Hopefully it's giving you good ideas and getting you started with a bit of a HMI programming. Hopefully it is helping you out. So if you like the video, don't forget that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel and uh, we'll do something else in the next video. So thank you much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.